What's up everybody, we made it, we are here. This is what everybody wants to talk about. Let's talk about belting. One of the most important things to understand about belting is that belting is not a register. Belting is a quality of sound. So we've talked about the two registers that make up the majority of our sound, the chest register and the head register. The men have the addition of the falsetto register. And a lot of the time, most of the time, we are mixing between these two registers. In the mixing lesson, we talked about how that works. We've got these two muscles, the heavy muscle and the light muscle. When we've got more chest dominant type of sounds, that heavy muscle is more involved. And when we've got those head dominant sounds, the light muscle is a little bit more involved, but they're both involved pretty much all the time. And we're just kind of exchanging the ratios between those two registers. Belting is a quality that is often described as bright and open. It's very speech-like and it can be thought a little bit of as kind of like a controlled call. Another typical characteristic of belting is that the vowels are a lot wider than they are in more classical styles of music. So that means that the lips and the mouth is gonna be a little bit more spread this way than it would be in more classical styles that have more vertical vowels. For the purposes of this lesson, I'm going to be replacing the word chest with speech. The reason for this is that we associate the word chest, like chest register, with naturally the vibrations of the chest. This can get a little bit dangerous when we talk about belting in the high register because the temptation is to bring those vibrations really, really far up. In the last lesson, we looked at why this is not necessarily a good thing. Ah! Not only is it potentially uncomfortable and maybe a little bit abrasive sounding, but it can also be dangerous for the vocal folds because it's putting way too much pressure on them. So in order to prevent the temptation to bring that chest feeling too high, we're gonna replace the word chest with speech. We're gonna start by saying, hey, in an outdoor voice, as if you're calling to somebody across the field and you're saying, hey. That hey sound can pretty quickly be turned from a controlled call into a singing sound. Hey, hey, hey. Basically, if you can speak, you can belt. So one way I like to think about it is like a percentage. In the mixing video, we talked about mixing as a ratio, and this is really the same type of idea. When we're belting the lower range, right around here for me, we're gonna have a high degree of speech and a low degree of head voice or head register. This makes sense because this is right around in my speaking range. So it would be something like this. Hey. It's primarily made up of that speech sound or chest voice, but there's still a little bit of head voice in there to make sure it doesn't get too heavy. When I move upward in my range to right about here in the middle, we're gonna have maybe 50-50. 50% speech-like sound, 50% of that head quality to lighten the sound. Hey! It's still got a good amount of that speech-like quality, which is what makes it sound like a belt, but there's enough head voice in there that it still feels easy and balanced. Then when I move up to the higher parts of my range, right about here, I've got to allow a good amount of that head voice quality and feeling to come into the sound but I still retain a little bit of that speech-like quality, which is what gives it that characteristic belt sound. Hey! It's still balanced. It's not any harder than the other sounds that I made. There's a good amount of head feeling in there, but just enough speech is retained in the sound that it still sounds like a belt. So let's try an exercise using this example, hey. We're gonna do a descending fifth interval. For women, we'll start at a G. I'm ready to go. Hey, really use that glide. And as you're moving through different parts of your register, really think about that idea of that percentage changing. When you're in the middle, hey, it might be more of that 50-50 type sound than when you glide down, hey, it's a little bit more of that speech quality. Girls, you can end this exercise at a D5. For guys, you'll start just a little bit lower than the girls on an F. Hey, hey. Guys, you can end this exercise at a B flat. Keep that calling sound light and easy, not too loud, not too intense. 
I think of this kind of like what I call the theater yell. This is like when you're on stage in theater and you can't actually put all your power into a yell because the mic will explode, but you need to create that effect of a yell. So it's more like a controlled call. Hey, yeah, hey. Keep it under control. Remember also that there is that wide vowel feeling. There's a little bit of like an inner smile that should always be happening as you're saying this. Another way to think about it is in terms of moving vibrations. We've talked about this diagram a lot and that's because it's a really important concept. The concept is that the vibrations in the lower parts of our voice resonate more in the chest and the vibrations in the higher parts of the voice resonate more in the head and they get higher the higher that we go. This is important all the time, but it's even more important for belting. As I mentioned before, if you try to bring those chest vibrations too high, you're gonna hit a ceiling and it's gonna be real uncomfortable and at some point you won't be able to sing any higher. So as you're belting throughout your range, make sure that you're allowing those sensations to rise into higher parts of your face. When I'm belting from about here, hey, it feels like the sound's coming from right here. If I were gonna make that come from here, no good. So this next exercise we're gonna do uses the words, oh no you don't. We're going to actually speak this exercise before we sing it. We're gonna try to aim our speech in between these two notes. Oh no, you don't. And we wanna say this as if maybe we were lightly scolding somebody. Then we're gonna try and make the singing feel the same way. Oh no, you don't. This doesn't have to be particularly beautiful. We're just trying to make that connection between speech and singing. Oh no, you don't. Oh no, you don't. Oh no, you don't. Oh no you don't, oh no you don't, oh no you don't. And you alternate back and forth like that. You can take this all the way up to a high G. Oh no you don't, oh no you don't. For guys, you can start this all the way down here. Oh no you don't. And you can bring it all the way up to a D5. Remember, as you're doing this, you wanna keep those sensations of the vibrations moving up and down. I think one of the things that's most surprising to people about belting is that it's a lot easier than people realize. When you really find that sweet spot of getting it very speech-like, allowing the vibrations to move up and down, allowing the head voice and the chest voice or that speech quality to exchange freely, what you'll find is that no more effort is required for the higher notes than the lower notes, and you can achieve that really powerful belt-like quality even in higher notes without working extremely hard to get them. This is one of the best ways to know if you're belting healthily. The effort level should be relatively consistent across the whole range. This takes some time to ingrain into the body, so if it doesn't happen for you overnight, don't get discouraged. Keep practicing, keep doing these exercises. A lot of what I know about belting comes from a phenomenal teacher and singer named Natalie Weiss. Really, at the end of the day, you don't wanna be belting all the time or using heady type sounds all the time. You wanna be able to use a variety of sounds to be able to tell the most convincing story. So let's check out a little bit of Natalie's performance to see how she does this. Beautiful head dominant mix. Belt. Speech dominant, chest dominant mix. Head dominant. Speech or chest dominant. Let's skip to the end and see what she does. Beautiful bell. Instead of mixing in her head that time, she goes full speech bell. All speech dominant belting. That's a high A flat. So you can see even the difference between the first chorus and the end, she changes the types of sounds that she uses to tell the best type of story. And she belts all the way to that high A flat, which just shows how high you can take that belt-like sound if you're mixing healthily. Well, there you have it. There's belting in a nutshell. In the next lesson, we're gonna be talking about the mysterious concept of resonance. What is that? We'll find out in the next lesson.